Introducing our official partners. IVF Matters. Leading the way in fertility care. And Cancer Aid and Research Foundation. Do vaccines cause autism? Do antibiotics work on viruses? Do you really have to drink eight glasses of water every day? Today, we're myth-busting 10 of the internet's most stubborn health beliefs. We'll be using large-scale studies, systematic reviews, and official guidance from bodies like the CDC and the NIH. No hype. Just science. Myth number one. Vaccines cause autism. This is arguably the most damaging myth of the last two decades. What people believe. A now retracted paper and endless online posts claim childhood vaccines, especially the MMR or measles, mumps and rubella shot, cause autism spectrum disorder. What the science shows. Decades of large, well-designed studies across multiple countries show no association between vaccines and autism. The US CDC summarizes this evidence plainly. Many studies have looked for a link, and to date vaccines are not associated with ASD. The National Academy of Medicine likewise found vaccines to be very safe, with extremely rare exceptions. How we know? Population-level studies across countries, including after the original fraudulent paper was retracted, find no difference in autism rates between vaccinated and unvaccinated children once you account for other factors. The verdict? Vaccines don't cause autism, but they do prevent serious diseases like measles, whooping cough, and polio. The autism claim has been investigated to exhaustion and rejected by the evidence. Myth number two, antibiotics kill viruses. What people believe? Antibiotics are universal infection killers. You just need one pill to fix any bug. What the science shows? Antibiotics are designed to kill bacteria, not viruses. The CDC is direct. Antibiotics do not work on viruses, such as colds and and the flu. Overusing them for viral infections drives the global threat of antimicrobial resistance, making our real weapons against bacteria less effective. How we know? Viral illnesses resolve without antibiotics. Prescribing an antibiotic for a simple cold or flu doesn't shorten your illness. It just exposes you to side effects and increases the risk of resistance. The verdict, if it's a viral infection, antibiotics won't help and could actually harm. Talk to your clinician about symptom relief and when to check back in. Myth number three, the eight glasses of water rule what people believe. The famous 8 by 8 rule, 8 8 ounce glasses of water daily, for everyone. What the science shows. There is no scientific basis for a one size fits all quota. Hydration needs very widely based on your diet, the climate you live in, your body size, your activity level, and your general health. Original guidelines often cited noted that foods and other beverages provide much of our daily water. How we know, Balanced studies show wide variability in how much water people need. For healthy adults, two practical guides work best. Thirst and urine color. The verdict. Eight glasses is a simple, catchy number, but it's not a magic number. Drink to thirst. You'll need more with heat or heavy exercise. And that's it. Myth number four. Knuckle cracking causes arthritis. What people believe. That satisfying pop is the sound of your joints being damaged, leading to arthritis down the road. What the science shows. Multiple studies, including work reviewed by Harvard and Johns Hopkins, find no increased risk of arthritis in people who habitually crack their knuckles compared with those who don't. There might be minor, temporary downsides, like slight swelling or slightly reduced grip strength in very heavy crackers, but not long-term arthritis. How we know. Imaging and comparisons show similar rates of osteoarthritis whether you're a lifelong cracker or not. The sound is the collapse of a gas bubble in the joint fluid, which is not damaging. The verdict. It might annoy your roommates, but cracking your knuckles absolutely does not cause arthritis. Myth number five. Sugar makes kids hyper. What people believe. 
birthday cake, sodas, and candy lead directly to chaos because sugar causes hyperactivity. What the science shows. A classic, high-quality analysis of multiple studies concluded that sugar does not affect behavior or cognition in children. Later research also found no link between sugar intake and the incidence of ADHD. Some observational studies seem to find a link, but these are almost always confounded by context. The excitement of a party, a lack of sleep, or parents' expectations that sugar causes chaos. How we know. In placebo-controlled trials, parents didn't know whether their kids got real sugar or a placebo. Even when the kids had no sugar, parents often perceived them as hyperactive. This is a powerful demonstration of the expectancy effect. The verdict. Sugar still isn't a health food. It's bad for your teeth and waistline, but it is not a mind control drug that flips the hyperactivity switch. Myth number six. Cold weather causes colds. What people believe. You catch a chill, and that's why you get sick. What the science shows. Viruses cause colds, not the temperature itself. However, cold, dry air, and crowding can help respiratory viruses spread. Studies show that rhinoviruses, a common cause of the cold, replicate better at cooler nasal temperatures, and our nasal immune defenses can dip in cold air. So, winter doesn't cause colds. It just creates conditions that favor the viruses that do. How we know? Lab studies show temperature-dependent changes in both viral replication and your innate immunity. Epidemiology shows a winter seasonality due to our behavior, being inside together, and the environment. The verdict, dress warm for comfort, but to stop the real cause, focus on washing your hands, ventilating rooms, and staying home when you're sick. Myth number seven, detox cleanses remove toxins. What people believe, juices, teas, foot pads, or specialized kits pull toxins out of your body what the science shows. There is no credible evidence that commercial detoxes remove unspecified toxins or improve health. These claims rarely even name a measurable toxin. The fact is, your liver and kidneys already handle detoxification extremely well. Official medical resources emphasize the lack of high-quality evidence, and many healthcare centers warn of the risks and false promises. How we know? Trials are scarce, small, and methodologically weak. When weight drops on a cleanse, it's typically short-term calorie restriction and water loss, not toxin removal. The verdict. Support your built-in detox system with a balanced diet, fiber, plenty of sleep, and minimal alcohol. Skip the magic cleanses. Myth number eight. Natural means safe and effective. What people believe. If a substance is natural, it's automatically better for you and safer than a pharmaceutical drug. What the science shows. Natural is not a safety label. The NIH's Office of Dietary Supplements stresses that natural does not equal safe. Some botanicals, like comfrey or carver, can injure the liver, and supplements can interact dangerously with prescription medications. Unlike prescription drugs, many herbal products in the US are not pre-market tested by the FDA for purity or potency. How we know. Case reports, pharmacology, and regulatory frameworks show significant variability in supplement content and clinically important herb-drug interactions, for example, St. John's wort and many common medications. The verdict. Natural products can help or they can harm. Always tell your clinician what supplements you take. Myth number nine. Shaving makes hair thicker. What people believe. Cutting hair with a razor changes the hair itself. What the science shows. Shaving does not alter hair thickness, color, or growth rate. It simply creates a blunt, flat tip that can feel stubbly and look darker when it first emerges. It's an optical illusion confirmed since early clinical studies. How we know. Microscopy shows the hair shaft diameter remains unchanged. Hair growth is determined at the follicle deep in the skin, not by cutting the shaft above the skin. The verdict. Stubble looks and feels thicker, but the hair's fundamental biology hasn't changed one bit. Myth number 10. Ear candling removes wax. What people believe. Lighting a hollow candle and sticking it in your ear somehow creates a suction that draws out wax by negative pressure. 
what the science shows. The FDA warns against ear candling as both ineffective and dangerous. Risks include burns, perforations of the eardrum, and even blockages. If earwax is truly impacted, safe, approved options include softening drops or professional removal by a clinician. Using cotton swabs, by the way, often just makes the impaction worse. How we know? There is no evidence of negative pressure sufficient to extract wax. The waxy residue often cited as removed earwax is actually just byproduct of the candle wax itself. The verdict? Skip the candle, see a clinician or use approved drops, but never try to suck the wax out yourself. As we reach the conclusion, remember this, medicine is always evolving, but good evidence outlasts short-term trends. Before you share a health claim, ask yourself, is there a randomized trial? Is there a large meta-analysis? Is there an official guidance from a major medical body? If you found this useful, share it with someone who's ever told you to drink exactly eight glasses of water or grab antibiotics for a cold. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more valuable insights on appraisals, revalidation, and interesting topics in healthcare.